Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This time we will talk about something super interesting about paraphilias. You will see that paraphilia and fetishes are not equal later, but let's start with paraphilias. So the meaning of the word paraphilia is beyond typical love or abnormal love. But what is normal and what is abnormal? We will see huge differences across societies and cultures. Let's take an example. The example of homosexuality. So homosexuality is a normal variation in sexual behavior in our culture in the Western countries. But it's still something deviant and crime against the nature in some part of Africa and the Middle East. So yes, there are huge differences what is normal and what is abnormal. But when we are talking about paraphilias, we have to make a difference. So there is paraphilia and the paraphilic disorder. Paraphilia is an unusual sexual interest that not necessarily requires any type of treatment. So it's relatively harmless. But when we are talking about paraphilic disorder, it's still an unusual sexual interest that is personally distressing to the individual and or involves victimization of others so it's actively harmful and also it's a persistent pattern of the behavior so it must last longer than six months but where do paraphilias come from? There are biopsychosocial roots for paraphilias. Hormones like testosterone and neurotransmitters like serotonin were linked with paraphilic interests. And the other factor is the social factor. So people with paraphilic interests have poor interpersonal skills, which means that they were unable to find a partner with whom they would explore normative sexual behaviors. So that's why they develop something paraphilic and the last factor is the psychological learning theory so sexual arousal overrides or disgust impulses what does it mean let's see it through research in this research women were assigned randomly to watch either a sexually arousing film or a arousing but non-sexual film or a neutral film and after that they were asked to perform some disgusting tasks and what they found is that sexually aroused women are more willing to attempt the disgusting tasks and felt less disgusted. That's super interesting because the sexual arousal was so strong that it overrides our disgust impulses. Let's continue with the type of paraphilias. There are two big groups. The non-coercive, non-victimizing paraphilias that includes the self or includes consenting adults. And the other group is the coercive victimizing paraphilias. In this case, it includes non-consenting adults or children. So here in this table, you can see the types of the paraphilias and also the source of the sexual arousal. We all know about fetishism, where the source is a non-human object, the body part or body secretion. And here are some familiar ones as well, masochism, sadism, or one of my favorite one is the exhibitionism, where the source of sexual arousal is exposing one's genitals to unsuspecting others. Such a nice gestures. Or necrophilia, corpses or human bones, or zoophilia, where the source are non-human animals. So sounds so much fun, but here you can see the main types of paraphilias. Let's continue with the treatment. So psychological interventions are required in the case of uh, significant distress to the individual or physical or psychological harm to others. So here are the types of the treatments. So the first type is the medical therapy. In the past, they were using surgical castration, which means the removal of the testes. Yeah, the sad part is that same-sex relationships were also something deviant and they were using surgical castration to treat them. 
but even today in some countries they are using these surgical castrations so you can choose it and you can reduce your prison sentence with that that's super interesting sounds like a good deal but today mostly they are using chemical castration like uh, depo provera which means that your body won't be able to produce testosterone and it will reduce the paraphilic interest the other type is the psychological treatment we usually combine psychological treatment with drug treatment because it's gonna be more effective let's see an example orgasmic reconditioning in this case we ask the patient to masturbate to the paraphilic fantasy of course not in front of us and when the orgasm is coming we ask to change the fantasy to a more appropriate fantasy like for example to erotic dancers or strippers or I don't know the point is that the fantasy will be more socially appropriate and with the time they will introduce the normal fantasy earlier and earlier to masturbation and with classical conditioning they will learn to have the pleasure with the normal fantasy and not with the paraphilic one the next type is the aversive conditioning in this case will pair the paraphilic fantasy with something unpleasant or with punishment but don't think about electroshock therapy because it's in the past and the last type of treatment is the social skills training in this case we have to handle the poor interpersonal skills so we have to help them to cope with rejection to express intimacy and develop some communication skills in this case they can find a partner with whom they can explore the normal sexual behaviors so hope you guys enjoyed this video and don't forget to like subscribe whatever you can do on my channel and see you next time